Angiotensin 2 receptor blockers are one category of medications that inhibit the activity of renin angiotensin system. They are commonly known as ARBs and these medications can be identified by their suffix sartan. What is this suffix sartan indicates? Here S indicates select 2, A indicates angiotensin 2, RT indicates receptor and AN indicates antagonist. So, sartans are select 2 angiotensin 2 receptor antagonists. They can also be called as blockers as they are going to block the actions of angiotensin 2. Therefore, you can identify all of the ARBs are ending with the suffix sartan. Angiotensin 2 receptor blockers mainly include medications like losartan, valsartan, irbisartan, candisartan, telmisartan, olmisartan and Sartan. All these are having the same suffix sartan and they are classified as angiotensin 2 receptor blockers. ARBs are particularly used in the treatment of hypertension. These medications can reduce the blood pressure by inhibiting the actions of angiotensin 2. This reduces the vasoconstriction produced by angiotensin 2 leading to decrease in the blood pressure. ARBs are the first line agents for the treatment of hypertension and particularly these medications are useful in the people who are intolerant to the AC inhibitors. Another clinical indication of ARBs is in the treatment of heart failure. Heart failure is a condition where heart is unable to pump sufficient amounts of the blood that is required for the body needs. This is also sometimes called congestive heart failure where people may have congestion in their heart leading to squeezing and pressure in the heart. The heart failure may be due to many of the reasons. People with chronic hypertension may have increased risk of developing heart failure because prolonged high blood pressure can produce an increased cardiac work. So when it is untreated, the cardiac overload can reduce the cardiac efficiency, thereby pumping ability is going to be reduced. ARBs work in heart failure in two ways. First, they can reduce the actions of angiotensin 2, thereby they produce vasodilation. This reduces the blood pressure, thereby it reduces the cardiac work and increases its efficiency. ARBs can also reduce the secretion of aldosterone, which is one of the hormones that is responsible for reabsorption of sodium into the body. Therefore, ARBs reduce the sodium retention and reduces the body volume. This also improves the pumping efficiency of the heart thereby it relieves the symptoms of heart failure. ARBs can also be used in the treatment of chronic kidney disease, which is commonly called as CKD. It is one of the progressive condition where kidneys are unable to filter properly, leading to more accumulation of waste and excess body fluids in the body. This may result in the buildup of toxins that can produce few of the serious complications. Angiotensin 2 receptor blockers are commonly used in the management of chronic kidney disease. Particularly, they are used in people who are having either hypertension or diabetes. ARBs can reduce the blood pressure by blocking the effects of angiotensin 2. As the blood pressure is reduced, the workload on the kidneys is reduced. That increases the filtering capacity as well as it can prevent further kidney damage. And the action of ARBs is to reduce the proteinuria. High levels of protein excreted in the urine can produce a damage to the kidneys. Using ARBs can reduce the proteinuria. Therefore, they can reduce the pressure on the glomerulus and renal tubules. Therefore, ARBs can reduce the progression of CKD. This can help the requirement for early dialysis or even kidney transplantation. ARBs can also reduce the cardiac work and they can prevent the risk of heart failure, stroke and heart attacks. This can reduce the complication of CKD. And the use of ARBs in the treatment of myocardial infarction and prevention of the stroke. Myocardial infarction mainly involves a cardiac damage. This may be due to reduced blood flow to the particular area or due to blocking of blood supply which results in the cardiac damage. ARBs can reduce the risk of stroke and heart failure. Therefore, they can be used in the prevention of myocardial infarction. However, all sartans are not working in a similar way 
and particularly if you have the medications like losartan and candisartan are particularly used for the prevention of myocardial infarction angiotensin receptor blockers can produce angioedema angioedema is one type of allergic reaction that may be produced by ac inhibitors or arbs generally arbs are having the less risk of developing angioedema compared with ac inhibitors it is one of the condition that results in the swelling of deeper layers of the skin and tissues particularly it can affect the muscles at face leading to facial swelling swelling of tongue throat and limbs the swelling of the throat and larynx may result in the difficulty breathing and it may also lead to serious complications in case of development of angioedema these medication should be discontinued this medication is teratogenic therefore it should not be given to the pregnant woman it can produce a fatal injury or even death that's why in the pregnant woman this medication should be avoided angiotensin receptor blocker should not be used in the people with bilateral artery stenosis it is one of the condition where both of the arteries connected to the kidneys are narrowed leading to decreased blood flow when angiotensin receptor blockers are used in the people with bilateral artery stenosis it may result in acute kidney injury this may result in the sudden decline in the kidney function and it may also lead to severe life threatening complications that's why in people with bilateral artery stenosis angiotensin receptor blockers should not be used arbs can produce another condition hyperkalemia elevated levels of potassium in the body hyperkalemia results in the elevation of potassium levels above 5.5 millimoles per liter potassium is one of the important electrolyte that plays an important role in controlling the functions of neurons muscles and even the heart when its levels are going to be elevated it may produce some impairment in these functions people may have few symptoms like muscle weakness palpitations chest pain difficulty breathing particularly arbs can interfere with the kidney's function and they reduce the excretion of potassium this may result in the more retention of potassium in the body leading to hyperkalemia particularly this is more pronounced in people with uh, impaired kidney function or pre existing diabetes lithium is a mood stabilizer which is also called as anti manic agent it is particularly used to treat bipolar mania however this lithium can interact with medications like uh, arbs angiotensin 2 receptor blockers can inhibit the renin angiotensin system thereby they can affect excretion of your of the ions particularly angiotensin 2 promotes the secretion of aldosterone which is responsible for reabsorption of sodium into the body since arbs block the actions of angiotensin 2 aldosterone secretion is reduced and sodium is not reabsorbed into the body this results in the increased excretion of sodium in the urine to restore this condition body tries to reabsorb the lithium because both lithium and sodium are monovalent cations so in presence of arbs lithium is more reabsorbed into the body leading to more retention and accumulation of its levels in the body this results in the lithium toxicity leading to few symptoms like tremors vomiting diarrhea and even seizures that's why whenever arbs are taken with lithium lithium dose should be properly adjusted now let us see how this arbs are going to work angiotensin 2 receptor blockers are going to inhibit the renin angiotensin system their main action is to block the actions of one of the important chemical mediator angiotensin 2 angiotensin 2 play an important role in our body it is one of the peptide hormone that is derived from its precursor angiotensin 1 this angiotensin 2 can affect the arteries kidneys and even the heart it mainly produces three types of actions one of its main action is on the arteries where it produces vasoconstriction it can also increase the cardiac contraction by acting on the angiotensin 2 receptors even it increases sodium reabsorption in the kidneys finally angiotensin 2 is responsible for hypertrophy and hyperplasia that means it also produces cellular proliferation leading to enlargement of renal tissues 
ARBs are selectively blocking the angiotensin 2 receptor type 1. This is called AT1 receptor. Now ARBs can block this AT1 receptors, thereby they can prevent the actions of angiotensin 2. This results in the decrease in the blood pressure and reduce sodium reabsorption and water retention. Now let us see the side effects of angiotensin 2 receptor blockers. ARBs mainly produces vasodilation, therefore they can produce few side effects that are related to dilation of blood vessels. Particularly, they can produce dizziness and lightheadedness. This is common with ARBs and it can be observed even with first dose of this treatment. They can also produce fatigue where people may feel tired. Headache is another common side effect. Even though rare, it can produce dry cough due to accumulation of bradykinin. However, this dry cough is more pronounced with AC inhibitors. ARBs can also increase the potassium levels leading to hyperkalemia which may produce rapid heartbeats and muscle weakness. Few of the hypersensitive reactions like angioedema may also be possible leading to swelling of face, tongue and throat. However, this angioedema is less pronounced compared with AC inhibitors. Hypotension is another important side effect that is more pronounced in people with volume depletion.